Yes, no way, Jose. It wasn't just it wasn't going to happen. He was angry at the bill that he even mentioned it. Oh dear, so there's bad feelings there. And so, um, as it happened, within a week or two he called us very humble and asked um could we possibly be out by the middle of the month? He had somebody who wanted to rent the place. <laughs> and they wanted to move in the middle of the month. Well, sure, we could be out. <laughs> so we were. But I had to go over to his office uh, to pick up the check. And he gave it to me, and he was looking, you know, quite embarrassed here. Uh, he just <laughs> had been found out. And by that time, I had such compassion for him, understanding that he didn't know the Lord or the ways of the Lord. He was just acting like any carnal man. Why should I hold anything against him? I was like that once, too, you know? <laughs> for I knew God sure was. Well, exacting your pound of flesh wherever you can get it. And so when he gave me the check, I said to him, I said, you know, we're new in this town, and it, we want to just have friends here. We don't want to have any upset with anybody. So we'll just completely overlook whatever has transpired here. And when I meet you on the street, so I'm going to give you a big smile, and I expect a big smile back. Is that okay? Well, he looked at me as if I just came from Mars or something. <laughs> he never heard a little speech like that ever before. <laughs> but um, when I meet him on the street, he gives me a big smile, and he means it. And I know it. God has done something. So the Lord is teaching us kingdom principles. He's teaching us to love the unlovely or to love those who, who don't know him, to, to show them consideration and um, not to hold ourselves above them or anything like that. When I go into our local post office there and if there's somebody, like I'm opening the door or they're opening the door, as the case of now, who's going in first? Usually I say, uh, if it's somebody that's older than I, I say, beauty before age. Oh, do they? Oh, you've made my day. <laughs> or sometimes, um, it's seldom, if, but if they let me go first, I'll say, oh, thank you, age before beauty, you know. <laughs> and so it's just little things like this that I find my heart moving in the ways of the kingdom. Do you find that too? And so God is doing this. He's circumcising our hearts. And um, I don't know, somebody was saying they asked the Lord, uh, what this circumcision means because it said it took away their reproach when they were circumcised. It took away their reproach. And he said, Lord, what is this reproach that you're taking away from us? I can't remember the exact words uh, the Lord told him, but it meant something like this. He took away our reproach that we had not been a fruitful and productive and loving and caring. We had not been to the people all that they expected a Christian to be. We had let them down many, many times. And at the time, we probably didn't even realize it because we were out after our rights or whatever, you know? We weren't loving with agape love. We were loving with filial brotherly love, if that, or eros, fleshly love, whatever. And so many times we have offended these little ones, either those that know him or don't know him. And the Lord said, this circumcision uh, is um, taking away our reproach that um, we have not been what he wanted us to be. So if that witnesses to you, keep it. If not, that's fine. But um, the Lord said, there is a time when he's circumcising you, and a time after that, that you're not going to go out and do any big battling. What did they do when they were circumcised? They had to just rest for so many days before he sent them in to tear down the walls of Jericho by faith and so on, you know. So some of us are in, I believe, that circumcision time. We're not out uh, slaying the giants yet, but they're out there being scared of us, worried about when we're coming. <laughs> yes, they are. And so we're resting in our circumcision, knowing that the Lord is doing a mighty work in us. Hallelujah. So now I'll stop and drink my water and catch my breath, and it's, um, it's over, over and out to you. If I've said anything to simulate something back, I want to hear it. Okay? And don't all talk at once and interrupt each other. Just take turns. As I was uh, in turmoil, and Deirdre and I were attending a, a marriage class. I, I teach mathematics, and I'm convinced that Jesus is the author of logic 
which is a branch of mathematics. And we, we know that he said in his word, if a man repents, you forgive him. And that's a perfectly logical statement. Hallelujah. But I had also been led to believe up to that point that if a man doesn't repent, then you don't forgive him. <laughs> and, you know, at, at, at first hearing, maybe, but it, it, it's absolutely ludicrous. It, it, it is not true. And it turned out, and this, this was the revelation, and I don't know why I didn't see it before, the only statement which follows from that is if you don't forgive, then that man can't repent. Well, that's good. And that was just a blockbuster to yeah. me. Yeah. I almost fell off my chair when I saw that. That I, I had to be a willing door. That, ha that opened and allowed this person to to repent when you well may I just share something I didn't yak 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 but you said something so important about the witchcraft because and this is hard but I think I, I need to share it I don't want to implicate anybody because we're all implicated in this okay that's the first thing I try to teach my kids but we left once uh, we left there was a bitterness we left a fellowship and uh, people were telling us that there was witchcraft being prayed against us and it was too terrible for me to even conceive. I said, oh no, this can't be happening. And I went to Rolf and I said, this isn't happening, is it? And he said, well, I'm afraid I felt it too. So, you know, it would be really easy to go, oh, those terrible people, yeah. but those terrible people are us. You know, <laughs> this is us, we're the body. And I said, Lord Jesus, and I didn't want to be afraid either. I just said, Lord, help me make a sense of what it is because I know it's not they're not conscious of what they're doing. Right. I think it was maybe it's possessive praying, too. It's a possessive kind of thing. And what I got, he gave me a vision of a lady, and she was kneeling, and she was giving forth her son to the Lord. Okay? <laughs> and it was like Moses' mother giving the Lord. She put him in the water, but instead of him letting him flow, like Moses' mother did, she yeah. ran around to the left bank and picked him up. Pharaoh's yeah. daughter. Yes. And I think he was showing us he was showing me a particular person's act of possessiveness and they didn't want to let go of us and they were probably praying oh please make them see the error of their ways yes, and this kind yes. of thing but he was showing all of us you know we'll say oh yes lord i'm yours take my spirit you know do with me as you will we just can't help going over and <coughs> fixing it up ourselves you mm -hmm. know because we can't quite trust him that he's going to finish the work mm -hmm. and to me that was this was he showed me about 13 years ago, but it had to do with this control, because control is just about power. Maybe for, what, for uh, the women, it's more about security, comfort, any of those things that he says have to go. So I don't want to ever be Pharaoh's handmaiden. I don't ever want to be over there trying to say, well, maybe I better just pick it up because it's going too slower. Oh, well, she said, um, we will pray on his behalf and we will take this before the Lord and repent on his behalf and ask the Lord to cleanse not only his heart but to cleanse his whole line of Catholicism as far back as when it started and go to his line, his lineage now, his children and his grandchildren that that curse of Catholicism will not affect those before him or after that it will be broken in him and in them. Oh, wow, that's a kind of a tall order, but okay, here we go. So we were praying and we came before the Lord and we confessed that sin as idolatry. And we asked him to forgive the idolatry of the heart that was in this man's life, in his uh, mother and father, and father in his lineage as far back as when it began. Please re forgive this sin of idolatry and also let it not affect the children and the grandchildren and generations to come, that they would be free from that. And when we prayed like that, wow, his wife had a vision, and she saw people as far back as your eye could see. And she, when we started to pray and ask the Lord to cleanse them as far back as when this began, she saw an arrow of light go 
right back, right, right through the whole, all the people that were there. So, oh, my word, this is really something. And so from time to time, since I saw that, the Lord will put on my heart to um, pray a Daniel prayer for someone. And um, I'm not going to say any personalities here at all. I will just say that there is um, a friend of mine who has been very much rejected by the church system because he has known um, these truths uh, before they could understand them, and they rejected him for having deep truths that were true, holy, just, and good. And so when they rejected him, it's pretty hard because he's got the truth. So it was hard to keep his heart absolutely pure from any reaction or bitterness or anything like that. And so um, I knew he was having some struggle, and I prayed about it, and I asked the Lord, what is the problem here? And he gave